This video is sponsored by Venture Mouthpieces. Hey trumpet nerds, welcome back to John Talks Trumpet. I am so excited to show you all the improvements and changes I've made to my 100 year old London Besson B-flat A trumpet. <laughs> When I first got this trumpet from the father of a symphony colleague of mine, there were a few things that really stood out to me about it. The valves had already been refit by Anderson in the 90s. Almost any antique trumpet project usually requires a valve job, so the fact that this had already been done was a huge relief for me and a big savings. It was generally in very nice shape without any significant dents or damage, and it included the original case and mouthpiece. And lastly, it has a quick change rotor valve, which when turned, adds or removes a half step length from the overall length of the trumpet, allowing it to play in B flat or A. But it didn't have the ability to adjust the first or third slides while you play, making intonation a serious challenge in both keys. It's in raw brass, which is smelly and kind of ugly, at least to me. And it has a smaller than modern trumpet shank mouthpiece receiver, which meant literally none of my other mouthpieces would fit into it. I could really only use the two mouthpieces that it came with. So on my quest to modernize this trumpet, the first thing I did was explore ways to make the slides movable. In order to make that happen, you have to attach a ring or a saddle somewhere on the slide so that you can move it while you're playing. The problem is that the first and third slides on the Besson both had male slide legs, meaning that the only way to modify them to become mobile would be to either attach a ring to a connection rod that goes all the Way to the moving portion of the slide or have the top legs of both slides reversed so that a saddle could be attached directly to the slide. Scott Sweeney of Sweeney Brass and I decided it would be more fun to fully reverse the top legs so that it most closely resembles how first and third slides work on modern trumpets. So why wasn't this trumpet built with mobile slides? Well, it has a lot to do with the quick change rotor valve. Playing an A using the quick change valve is one of my favorite things about this instrument. So why don't we see any of these on modern trumpets? This type of valve is also known as a barrier and they were extremely common in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, when composers were often writing for trumpets in a variety of keys, like A, B flat, B natural, C, D flat, or D. A big reason that these different keys of trumpets were necessary at all was to avoid playing in keys that relied on using very out of tune fingerings, like one, two, and three. Instead, players would just turn their change valve and adjust the stagnant length of the other slides, which meant that they had to compromise the best they could on notes that you would normally be moving your slide for nowadays, like, going out on one and three and then back in when going out to two and three. Nowadays, mobile slides are the industry standard and are featured on most trumpets, making playing in keys like B natural or D flat not nearly such a problem for the instrument, more a problem for the player needing the very advanced finger dexterity. All this is to say, when you need to switch the trumpet into A, you can't just turn the quick change valve and expect the trumpet to actually play in tune. You need to also adjust the first, second, and third valve slides in order to completely switch between playing in B flat or A. Making the slides mobile would allow me to make real-time first and third slide adjustments in either key and opens up a whole world of repertoire and usage possibilities for it because it would actually be fully chromatic with the ability to adjust the pitch of almost every note. Finally, after quite a bit of practice, I feel like I might be able to play a reasonably in tune Carmen Prelude on it. Once we got the mobile slides going, I also had Scott vent the third piston, you know, because those new valves have tons of compression, and add a third slide stopper so the venting wouldn't make me accidentally drop my third slide. I did have Scott switch out the original first valve ring that he put on, which was a little too chunky for me for a box style one, and also had him angle the third slide ring out a bit so that my finger wouldn't always hit the quick change valve when I moved the third slide. The other thing I wanted to dial in was the mouthpiece situation. This Besson came with its original, very old school mouthpiece, and a Bach 1C 23 throat that had the shank turned down to fit the best and smaller than modern mouthpiece receiver. Neither mouthpiece is anything like the mouthpiece I normally use at work, which was the problem I wanted to address. Before I go on to the mouthpiece project though, you might've already noticed that I decided not to get the best and silver plated, something I definitely considered and even asked you all about in my first video about it. Responses varied, but what convinced me was when someone pointed out that if it was actually silver plated, a lot of the smaller imperfections and dents on the instrument would stand out a lot more than they do now. So I decided it was best to just leave it raw and deal with the smelly hands. Okay, now onto the mouthpiece issue. I wanted to feel like the Besson was an extension of my body. 
And to accomplish that, I wanted to be able to play a mouthpiece on it that was as close to my main mouthpiece as possible. But because of the weird smaller mouthpiece receiver that Besson has, I needed a custom solution in order to accomplish this. Who else would I go to besides this video's sponsor, Venture Mouthpieces? To make a copy of my main mouthpiece with the smaller shank end needed to fit in the Besson, I had to find a way to reduce the shank end size a lot. From a pretty typical 384 thousandths of an inch to about 366 thousandths of an inch. I also had to shorten the mouthpiece design a bit to be a similar length to the other two Besson pieces. If you want to see how we designed my main orchestra mouthpiece, go ahead and check out this video. But since we already had that design nailed down in the VenCAD software, it really only took a few minutes to both shrink the shank end size to fit the smaller receiver and truncate about a fifth of an inch off the end of the backbore so that the overall length would still be right. Doug then sent the file to the CNC lathe and within minutes, our new best and adapted version of my orchestra mouthpiece had already been cut in raw brass, which I affectionately named the old man. Ventures technology easily allows you to scan, compare, modify, and even create from the ground up almost any mouthpiece you can imagine. Use a discount code, the old man at checkout on Venture's website to get 10% off any brass mouthpiece from Venture. At the end of the project, I now have an antique trumpet that is decked out with modern features. Using a copy of my orchestra mouthpiece and my newly mobile first and third slides, this trumpet is fully capable of being used professionally as a B-flat or A trumpet. And I have actually used it at work. Huge thanks to Scott Sweeney for the wonderful custom work on the trumpet and to Venture Mouthpieces for easily making my mouthpiece dream come true and for sponsoring my channel. And I'll see you on my next Nerdy Trumpet adventure.